Our team attended the Association of the U.S. Armies, or AUSA, conference. At the event, I spoke with Heidi Hsu, the new Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering, about the top innovations in her department and even virtual reality programs. Here's a look at the conversation. Secretary Hsu, welcome to the program. Thank you. So what are some of the top innovations that you're working on at the Defense Department? Wow, we don't have enough time to cover it all, but I'll just talk about a few things, okay? In the area of AI and ML and autonomy, there's been billions of dollars that's invested in this area, especially in the commercial industry, right? What I'm really interested in is building the trust into AI ML, the trust in the autonomy, because if we have an unmanned platform that does something that the operator didn't anticipate, the operator will get suspicious and lose trust. So I want to focus the research to develop the trust and the assurance, and perhaps the ability to even dial the level of trust and, and autonomy. Okay? So that's one of the key areas I would like to focus on. Okay? Uh, another key area, if I may, share with you would be to be able to operate in the intersection of signals intelligence, uh, communications, radar, electronic warfare with cyber. Because threats today are so advanced, you don't have time to say, I see something, that's an that's a adversary, then cue something else to perform some effects, right? So it's important to have the ability to operate in the intersection so you can do it very, very rapidly. You head up the new innovation steering group uh, at the DOD. Tell me about that and what your strategy is to meet its goals. Okay. Uh, so my first hour into the Pentagon, DevSecDev uh, told me, I stood up the innovation steering group and it's yours to chair. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> so there are several things we're doing in there, just to let you know. One, we're doing a campaign of continuous experimentation and demonstrations, okay, to fulfill a joint warfighting capability gap. This is Project Convergence. Uh, this, no, uh, Project Convergence is the Army, okay. This is the radar. What we're doing is across the Department of Defense, so all the services are tied in, okay. We were collaborated with all the services, collaborated with all the COCOMs, and we've collaborated uh, with, with just about everybody we know, right? And we actually received 203 white papers, okay? And out of that, we down-selected to the top 32, okay? And that's the top 32 project that will best fulfill the capability gaps, and we're, we're doing that in FY23. The other thing that we're doing in, uh, uh, in the uh, innovation steering team is uh, we're looking across the department. Every service has stood a whole bunch of different innovation centers, right? So we are looking across to figure out who's, who has what mission, what have they bought, from whom, and what capability are they fulfilling what have they transitioned to the warfighter, right? And what are some of the best practices so we can leverage that across for other small companies, right? And then the third thing we're doing is we're looking across our laboratory infrastructures and facilities to say, are we funding appropriate amount of lab equipment, laboratories, and facilities so our researchers can have the latest and greatest? Can you point to any specific successes you've had with that group? Well, uh, I've only been in the Pentagon for two and a half months. So. Well, that's long enough. <laughs> that's not quite long enough. So we're really getting our arms around this is something that's brand new. So we're looking towards uh, collecting the information in that in particular, and hopefully by next year, I'll be able to report out back to you. Okay, sounds good. How has the Chief Technology Officer role changed? Um, in the last few years to match the constant innovation and evolution of technology? Yeah, I think one of the things I'm trying to drive is uh, organizationally, I'm, I'm changing and pivoting a, a little bit. I want to have an organization that's informed by intelligence, 
namely, I want to understand what our adversaries are investing in and what they are doing in terms of fielding and demonstrating in terms of capabilities, right? And from that, I want to look at what we're doing in our own internal research, uh, not just within the DOD laboratories, but also look at what are small companies funding and doing research in, what are our FFRDC and UARCs working in, and our defense contractors, what are they investing in terms of IRAP, right? And how can I get things to better closely collaborate together? Then another organization, what I'm focusing on, is on the modernization initiatives, which I have a dozen, okay? And then uh, the last pillar of what I'm doing is I'm looking at all the joint warfighting capability gaps, okay? And I will have a focal point for each of the joint warfighting capability gaps to fully understand across the services what's missing, okay? And then help that tie into building prototypes and experimentation to close those capability gaps. So we don't have a whole lot of time left, but I want to ask you about virtual reality and um, kind of how you're working with the gaming industry to bring those technologies into DOD. Okay. If you look at the gaming industry, they are pushing the state of the art, right? And it's very impressive where they're going. Think about a couple of things that we need, okay? The, if we can build digital twins of our system and enable the AR, VR world to tie into a digital twin and tie into a virtual simulation, we can now encompass all of that and put, a, put our warfighter into a more realistic environment. Because you can't necessarily always get into that type of environment, right? But to create this opportunity so the, so the warfighter can experience it in as much realism as possible will be incredibly powerful. Well, there's so much more to talk to you about, but we've run out of time. Thank you so much, Secretary Shu, for this. Thank you.